Joseph, Part 2, Genesis chapter 37 through 50. When we met together last time, we talked about how Joseph had been sold by his brothers into slavery. They didn't like that Joseph was being treated more kindly by their father than they were, and they certainly didn't like the dreams that he had about them bowing down to him. So they decided that they were going to put him in a pit and wait for some slave traders to come by. They sold him as a slave, and the slave traders made Joseph walk a long distance all the way to Egypt, and when he got there, he was purchased by a man named Potiphar. Potiphar put Joseph to work in his house as a servant. Joseph worked so hard and so diligently that he was promoted to be in charge of all the servants and over all of Potiphar's household. Potiphar didn't have to worry about a thing, except for Potiphar's wife. She was very unkind to Joseph, and she tried to get to Joseph to do things he shouldn't, and then she blamed Joseph and got him put into jail. Potiphar believed his wife more than he believed Joseph, even though Joseph had done all those good works for him. Joseph, while he was in jail, continued to work hard, and when the jailer saw how responsible Joseph was, he put him in charge of all the prisoners. And Joseph took that responsibility and did well with it. But while he was in jail, he met the cupbearer and he met the baker. The cupbearer is someone who tastes the pharaoh's food before he does, in case there's poison in it. And the baker, well, he bakes bread. Both of those men had done things that made the pharaoh upset and they ended up in jail. In jail, they had dreams. One, the cupbearer had dreams about clusters of grapes, and the baker had dreams about the birds coming down on, their head, on his head and taking the bread from his bowl. Both of them talked to Joseph, who was in charge of them, in the jail. And Joseph interpreted both dreams, and what Joseph said was going to happen in those dreams came true, because God had decided that was what was going to happen. Joseph asked the cupbearer to go talk to the pharaoh and tell him that he was able that he was able to interpret the dream and maybe put a good word in for him but the cupbearer forgot all about Joseph and for 2 years Joseph waited waited in the jail well it wasn't too long after the 2 years that the pharaoh had dreams he dreamed about 7 large healthy cows and 7 very thin cows and then he dreamed the seven thin cows ate the fat cows. And then another night he had a dream about large, full stocks of grain and very healthy looking grain. And then there were other stocks of grain that were withered and beaten down by the wind and, and they were scorched. And the scorched ones ate the full sheaves of grain. Well, that didn't make sense at all and it troubled the Pharaoh very much. Then the cupbearer remembered that there was Joseph in the jail and he could interpret dreams. So he put in a word for him with Pharaoh and Joseph came up and interpreted the Pharaoh's dreams. He told them there were going to be seven years of famine, first of all seven healthy years, and then followed by seven years of famine and he better do what he needs to do to save that up, all the grain up. And the Pharaoh decided, this man is wise and I'm going to put him in charge. So he put Joseph in charge of all of his orders of taking care of the grain. And Joseph, just like he had interpreted in the dream, ended up with all of those things coming true. And they got, they had seven very healthy years and then they had seven very, very dry years. And all the work that Joseph had done provided for the people in Egypt. Well, this famine didn't just affect Egypt, it affected all of the land around it, all the way to Joseph's family. And Jacob, they were so hungry but had heard about what was happening in Egypt, sent his brothers to go find some food in Egypt. When the brothers got to Egypt, they asked for grain. But when they went up to Joseph, they didn't recognize Joseph, but Joseph recognized them. So when he had them pack up their grain, he told somebody to put a cup, one of the king's cup in there. And then the brothers left with their grain. And when they left, Joseph sent his men after them. And they found the cup in the grain. 
and they brought them all back and put them into jail. And they left one brother in jail, and they sent Joseph sent the other brothers home and said they couldn't come back without their youngest brother. Jacob didn't like this plan because it hurt his heart because he'd lost Joseph already, and now he's going to lose Benjamin. But the brothers said when they ran out of grain, we can't go back if we don't have Benjamin. We won't be able to get any grain. And when they came back, Joseph started to see through several tests that he gave them that their hearts were changed and that they were concerned about all of the brothers, no matter how their dad felt about them. And he broke his heart and he was very sad and he wanted to show them who he was. So he revealed who he was to his brothers and they were overjoyed and happy and they let the brother out of the jail and he got to be with them too and Joseph told them, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. And they went back and they told Jacob that Joseph was alive and that he was saving them with the food. And then Jacob saw Joseph. And they were able to be reunited. And what a blessing it was for Jacob to have all of his sons together again. Well, boys and girls, this part of Joseph was sometimes started out just as difficult as what we were listening to last week. It seemed like Joseph just kept getting hard thing after hard thing after hard thing. And you want to know what makes it seem so hard? Was he was doing what God asked him to. He was interpreting dreams and doing obedient things from his dad and he was doing what Potiphar asked him to do and taking care of the house and he was doing what the jailer asked him to do and taking care of all the prisoners well. And it just seemed like one thing after another that Joseph just could not catch a break. But you want to know what I really like about this story for a focus? I think that it's really important what we think about at the very last part of Genesis when Joseph finally reveals himself to his brothers. What his point is, he says, you meant it for evil but God meant it for good. Now, I don't know about you, but when things are happening and I'm having a hard day, sometimes that's not the first thing that comes to mind. And I don't want to think about how this could be for my good. I'm angry and I want it to change. But I think that what I want us to understand out of this story was that Joseph remembered the truths about who God is and who God was in the past, and who God promised he would be, that he could trust that God was going to work this situation out for his good. And he knew that when the hard times came, his job, his responsibility, was to do the next right thing. He wasn't supposed to worry about why it was happening, although I would think there were probably nights he asked why and cried and was frustrated and sad. But he trusted that God was going to work it out for his good. Just like we talked about last week in Romans 8, 28, when we said that all things work together for good, for those are called according to God's purpose. Now, what do you think God's purpose was for Joseph in all of this? Well, we read about it at the end of the story. God's purpose was for Joseph to be able to feed the whole land of Egypt and everyone around him. And finally, to reconcile with his brothers in the ways that they treated each other. What an amazing event for him to be able to say to his brothers, look at this, you wanted to hurt me, but God used it so I could help and provide for everyone. What a great perspective. And in these uncertain times, and in each day when we want to make a decision and have a plan and know what's going to happen, but we can't, we can trust that God is good. We can trust that God is faithful. We can trust that he's provided for our greatest need. Our greatest need is sin. Our greatest need isn't to know what we're going to do for the school year or how it's going to happen if I can't play sports or what's going to happen if I can't go to the fair like I want to or things like that. Although it's hard and it's okay to cry about them, it's okay to be sad and disappointed. We should always be thinking about how God has provided for our greatest need, which is our sin. He sent Jesus to die on the cross and to rise again the third day so that we could have freedom from sin, 
so that he could take the judgment for us? Talk about something that's not fair. And that he, God used some men and their evil plans to kill Jesus for our good. So many times in our lives, we don't understand what's happening. Even as adults, we think we know. We lay down the law like we know. And we answer and do those kinds of things like we know. But sometimes our responses are out of fear. And we ourselves as adults need to be reminded that even though it doesn't work out the way we want it to, or somehow some evil has come to us that we don't understand, that our God is sovereign, which means he's ruler over all. And for you guys to look at the story of Joseph and to see a young man who purposed to do the next right thing and to trust that God meant it for his good is an encouragement to wake up each day to read God's word to understand the things that are the right things to do by reading God's word. And then to trust God by praying, telling him the things that you're concerned about, knowing he's the one that's going to care for them. And to trust God by understanding that each of these events in our lives are for us to grow closer to him when we turn to him when we're scared or sad or even in moments of victory when we want to be joyful, we can turn to him and praise him for those things. And then people around us may ask why we have such a hope and such joy. And we can say, because we know God means it for good and for us to show his glory. So I pray for you this week that you can learn from this story that God means things that happen in our life for good, all things for good. Even though other people can mean it for evil, we can know that God is using it for our good so that we can point others to him and for his glory. Have a great week. Hi, kids. Mrs. Molyneux taught yet another lesson on Joseph this week, and I am going to do yet another craft. Last week, um, we talked about Joseph being taken by his brothers and sent to Egypt. And so what I had you do is I had you take some white flowers, this is Queen Anne's lace, and cut 12 for the brothers. And I had you put one of them in a vase full of um, colored water with food coloring, and then put it back with the others after it turned colors. And so now I hope that they've lasted the week for you like they've lasted me, because now you can see that even though Joseph was uh, taken from Israel and to Egypt and put in jail and all that, that um, it ended up being for good and for good for his family and that his dream came true that uh, he, that his brothers were going to have to bow down to him, that that was a true dream from God because he had meant what was, they meant for evil, he had meant it to be for good for them. So I hope that your flowers lasted, that you could see that. Now we're gonna make um, a craft today based on today's lesson. Um, so the first thing I want you to do is I want you to take a piece of paper and I want you to fold it so that the folds come in like this. Okay, so that's the first part of it. And then after you've folded it, you're going to write some words on it. And the words I want you to write on the outside part, the folded part, are you meant evil against me. This is just part of a verse. So you meant evil against me. And then I want you to make some sort of jail cell bars. You could do it with um, yarn like I did or black pieces of paper, or I don't know, you could use your imagination. Maybe you have pipe cleaners or something like that, that you could make black bars with, or you could draw it if all you have is some markers. And then, um, on the, then you're gonna open it up and on the inside, you're gonna put more of the verse, but God meant it for good. And this is from Genesis 50, 20. It's not the whole verse, but it's part of it. And then I want you to find pictures of food because remember what Joseph did, what was the good that came out of it was there was this famine and there wasn't enough food, but because Joseph had been placed there in Egypt by his brothers and by God, he was ready to tell them God's plan and he helped them save food so that they didn't starve during the famine. So I cut out from um, just a buyer's guide, I cut out pictures of food and put them around there, but maybe you have 
um, some recycling you could use. It has you know boxes from food that you've bought or you could draw um, pictures of food on there. You can use your imagination. You could even glue pieces of food on there if you want, glue some macaroni or something on there. Whatever reminds you that um, because God um, had put Joseph there, they had food that they needed. And so then you have your craft that you can practice your verse. You meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, Genesis 50, 20. So I hope that you're able to do that and I hope you have a good week. Bye.